uh, this month that we celebrate our men. And let's give our men a hand this morning. They do a fantastic job. Thank God for the leadership, brother Roberts, who does a fantastic uh, job uh, with the men. And I'm just grateful for his uh, leadership and his service uh, at the church. And we want to spend the next few weeks uh, encouraging our men. And, one of the, uh, and the men that you may know, uh, you, can, you can go home and tell them, Reverend Nolan said this okay. out of the Bible. Okay. Don't just say he said it. Right. Some of you preaching it, he said it. Right. Man. Uh, so I want to I I continue to capture that, that theme, the blessed man. I want to I I preach this sermon out of the book of Psalm, the book of Psalm, the 112th Psalm. I want to examine those first three verses. Everybody ought to be able to get to the Psalms, right? Just go to the 23rd. You know where the 23rd Psalms is. Just turn the pages to the right of you and you get to Psalms 112. Psalms 112. Thank you for standing for the reading and reverence of God's word. Psalms 112, beginning at verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man mm -hmm. that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Mm -hmm. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endureth forever. You may be seated in the presence of God. It, before it begins to talk about God's man, it simply says, praise ye the Lord. And that's what I'm going to talk about this morning for just a few moments. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord for God's man. Praise the Lord for God's man. This month, we are examining this idea of the blessed man. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're, we're spending time, you know, I, I think it's important that uh, a blessed man, all one, be understood. But, but to understand what the Bible talks about when it's talking about being blessed, you, you have to understand uh, the Bible's definition, biblical definition of, of blessed and what it means and what it has transitioned into over time. In, in the Old Testament, uh, uh, the idea of being blessed, you know, when, when, when God called Abraham out of earth, out of the Chaldeans, he kept calling from a, a pagan blessed a background. He told Abraham, because you follow me, because you're exercising your faith, because you're going to a place that you don't even know about, because I ain't showed it to you yet, he said, I'm going to bless you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What does he mean by that? He said, I'm going to bless you, and uh, that's going to be tangible evidence that you are walking with me. There are, there are indicators in society that, that prove uh, you are a blessed man or that you are a man of means. And God says, in order for you to do it, I'm going to bless you. And so uh, read, read, read the book of Genesis after Genesis 12 and on. Uh, every place Abraham would go, people would give him stuff. He had tangible evidence of being blessed. He was blessed because he had cattle. He, had, he was blessed because uh, he, he, he had uh, gold. Huh? I mean, he, went, he went to McKill's a day and, and, and McKill's a day gave him a tenth of what he owned and McKill's a day was rich. Huh? And so, so we understand that in the Old Testament to be blessed you had to have stuff. Uh, a woman that was blessed was a woman with children. Huh? If you were barren and you weren't able to have kids and that type of thing, you were considered cursed. But a woman who could bear kids and especially bear sons, yes, she was considered blessed. Yes. But 
But you got to be careful how you assign definitions to your life. Somebody look at, 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 at Abraham. Well, he did it for Abraham. He'll do it for me. Well, not so much. Because this idea of being blessed, its meaning has transitioned over time. And, and so if you want to if you want to know what blessed is now, don't take my word for it. Take Jesus's word for it. Huh? Because Jesus says in Matthew 5 and 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall Become. You see, you see how the meaning of blessed have shifted from tangible stuff to intangible things. In other words, Jesus is saying you can have a whole bunch of stuff and still not be worth the quality. Right. And so he redefines this idea of being blessed. I'm not going to read all the beatitudes to you, but that's what that's Jesus telling you what quit letting folk telling you you blessed and you cursed and it don't line up with God's word. Amen. God tells you what a blessed man is. Huh? But, but Jesus says blessed is the, you know, is the peacemaker. Right. Huh? I don't care if a person got a whole bunch of stuff. I don't care if they do have a nice house. I don't care if they do drive a nice car. If they keep it up mess, Jesus said they ain't worth the quality. Amen. And so, this idea of the blessed man, uh, God is not looking at the outside. Well, huh? He must be blessed because he's driving that bad car. That don't mean nothing. Yeah. Huh? That just means you got decent enough credit where somebody trusts you to get your car. Huh? Don't mean your heart right. Don't mean, don't mean you have joy. Right. Don't mean you able. To, that's not an indicator of you being able to love. Right. Huh? That's not an indicator of you being able to show compassion. Right. Huh? I know folk with new cars can't even smile. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't want nothing. What a note gonna make me say? So, so this idea of, of, of blessed, here, here it is. The psalmist wants us to praise God for the blessed man. In a few, in a, in a, in a few weeks, we'll have the election. And, and, and one of the choices on the ballot is this dude walking around trying to portray himself as being strong. Huh? feels that real power is you talking about folk. Uh -huh. Power is you putting folk down. Yeah. Huh? But I love this. Well, uh, and, and, and what gets me about, about, about that guy that's running for president is folk following him. Yeah. Folk are almost to the point where they're praising him. Yeah. Huh? But I love this. The Bible tells us today that we ought to praise God yeah. for his man. I know folk want us to believe uh, that they got all the answers and they, they can uh, solve all of our problems, but uh, some of my problems are too big for the White House. Some of my problems are too heavy uh, for Trump, too heavy for Kamala. I need a God that's bigger than the White House. I need a God that's bigger than the Treasury Department. I need a God that's superior and reigns supreme over the universe. Ain't no problem. Ain't no problem. My God can't solve. Huh? I don't know how he do it, but it don't take an act of Congress for him to keep my bills paid. And so I don't look to Congress to pay my bills. I look for God, my help. And buddy, but we ought to praise God for his man. He tells you what his man looks like. You single women, you want, you want a man? Look for this one. Uh, look, look, look for this one. Huh? Look what it says. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delight greatly in his 
Man, praise the Lord for God's man. God, man, fears him. Uh, this, this fear is not grounded uh, in an anxiousness to be harmed. No, no, this fear comes out of respect. Amen. This fear comes out of reverence. The Bible says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. God says, what good is a car if you don't respect the one that gave it to you? Huh? Huh? What good is your home? What good, what good is me to bless you with a home and you won't reverence and fall down on your knee before the God that made it possible? Huh? God said the blessed man is the one that fear. And let me tell you something. Real fear. Here it is. How does fear of the Lord play out in my daily living? Can I show you how? You live in light of him. I, that's how the fear plays out. I put it this way. When I was coming up, I, I lived in light of my household. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I feared my mother. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So when I would go to school, the decisions I made, I made considering her reaction. I wasn't so much worried about teachers' reaction. I was worried about my mama's reaction. And so listen, how does it play out when you when you when you little stuff when you when you go from the classroom to the lunchroom? Everybody else acting fool or whatever. But I'm in class. Because I'm thinking, I'm living in light of my house. Uh, you, you, you're making decisions all day long. And, and real fear of God is living in light of Him. I, I have to, I'm learning that, that I have to watch my reactions. I have to watch how I carry myself. I, not because I'm trying to make myself better, but it's who I'm representing. Uh, what 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 God what folk think about me is how they gonna think about God. Remember, you calling yourself God's man. You calling yourself God's woman. So how are we? Well, we gotta fear Him. We fear Him. We fear Him. Look look what it look at what it does. Uh, I love this because right as uh, chapter one eleven closes, Psalm one eleven closes. The last verse in that uh, text sums up our first point. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, so fearing God, uh, it makes us wise. It leads to wisdom. Uh, uh, when I'm living in light of him, the decisions I make, I make them because God huh, don't want me to do it. Huh? He don't want me to do it. He doesn't want me to respond that way. He doesn't want me to move that way. And so in li living in light of him over time, it makes me wise. Mm. Folks wonder why you don't get up and set at everything. Huh? Folk, I mean, I, you, know, you know one of the biggest things that you can do? It just walk away. Walk away. Come on. Uh, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah, walking away, you could, all that means is you ain't got time to argue. Uh, I ain't got time to prove it. Uh, listen, and, and at a certain point, I don't care no more. <laughs> but I can't tell you that part. That, that's when we get out of church. I'm, I'm just trying to tell you, you got to learn how to live in life of God every day. And it begins with fearing Him. Yeah. And it needs to be yeah. make you wise. Uh, we don't hang out with you no more because I'm wise enough not to. I don't want to do what you do. I don't want to go where you go. Uh, so I don't want to argue about it. I'm wise enough. Sometimes I don't even answer my phone. I see it. Yeah. It makes us wise. Fear of the Lord, it makes us wonder. Huh? It makes us wonder because uh, God, 
God, when he shuts things down. You ever have God shut something down? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's only then when he shut it down, he opens up other possibilities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Free of the Lord leads the wonder, but it also, listen, sisters and brothers, it leads to waiting. You, you, you become more patient yes, you when yeah. you fear yes, you God. How many, how many of you are, are blessed by God because you, God have delivered you from that spirit of right now. I got to have it right now. I got to go get that car right now. I got to go get it dead right now. God have delivered. He's taught me patience. He taught me how to wait. I don't want to make a move without it. I need you to guide my steps. Uh, if he showed you the path, would you walk in it? That's a question. Yes. Would you? Uh, yeah, his praise the Lord for God's man. He fears. He fears God. But not only that, not only do we see his fears but we also see his family. Men, God, God give men responsibilities. Yes. And, and, and when you're God's man, uh, you, you got to take care of your household. And, and you have to be mindful of the households that are going to be coming after you. Huh? Listen, uh, look what the scripture says. It says, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He's talking about family. He's talking about men who be given charge of other people. And, and, and what's presented to us, the Bible says this family, God, as, as, as we uh, 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 walk in this idea of being God's man, uh, we need to understand that God wants us to produce mighty men. Yes, hallelujah. The Bible says the seed shall be mighty. Mm -hmm. uh, mighty in what? Mighty in the Lord? Yeah. Trusting in the Lord. The biggest, the most powerful thing that we can teach our children is to know and to fear God. Yes. Huh? And, and, and the real prayer ought to be is that God give you evidence of it before you die. Yes. Huh? One of the things, you want to know that part of your parenting huh? you were successful in. Yes. That you led your child yes. into the presence of Jesus Christ. You can't accept them for them. Yes. You can't say yes to Jesus. But you sure can make an introduction. Uh, yeah. Uh, God's man is, he leads a family of, of mighty followers. They're mighty and they're also moral. Uh, what's missing in our world, sisters and brothers, is morality. Huh? The Bible, I know it's morals or morality because the Bible says his righteousness. Uh, that's doing what's right. Those are your morals. Yeah. Huh? Knowing the difference between right and wrong. Huh? I love this because God's man leads a moral family. Yeah. Uh, you can't make folk do nothing after a certain age. Yeah. But you can show sure talk righteousness. Yeah. Uh, and I discovered, sisters and brothers, I'm, I'm pretty particular of what I allow to live up under my roof. Thank you, Hallelujah. Yeah. God has given me a family. But I want it to be a moral family. Yeah. Huh? And one of the things, folk, since we're talking about men, mm. folk get mad. I hope they, well, they feeling me. That's all good. If somebody <laughs> don't call me about it, about it. But yeah. it's all good. Yeah. But when you talk about men, uh -huh. you can't talk about a man mm. and not talk about masculinity. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you. Real men mm. are masculine. Yeah. I know we, we live in a world where it's his slash her. Huh? And you can buy, you know, you can buy unisex clothes. Well, man, 
and a woman can wear. Huh? They call it metrosexual. That, that type of stuff. All this kind of crazy stuff. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Huh? When, when God makes a man, can I tell you the difference between men and women real quick? Listen, listen, listen. One reason why there's a difference between why women are softer and, 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 and more emotional is because women were created in paradise and men weren't. God, when God made man, he, he just reached down, got some dirt from the ground. He really wasn't particular about the dirt. He just knew that when he breathed in it, something magnificent was going to happen. But it was just regular old dirt. Huh? But when Eve was created, the Bible said after he made man, he set him in the garden. He, yeah, yeah, he put him in paradise. When he got ready to make Eve, man was in paradise. Yes. Huh? So he caused man to go to sleep. He took a rib from him. Huh? And out of that, he fashioned him a woman. But it was in paradise. It was in, she was created in perfection. Huh? Him, not so much. Go to wow. You know why he's rough? Around the edges. How? Because you were created, women were created in paradise, and he wasn't. Huh? Know why he's hard? You know why it's easy for you to love? Huh? And he just won't respect? It's because we were made in different places. Huh? And when we're trying to get away from what God has made, and God made man masculine. And I want to be the way God made me to be. If you got boys that you ought to have charge of, you need to make sure that you raise them the way God wants them to be. Listen, let me tell you something. If you got boys, ladies, if you got boys at a certain age, you got to give them around some dudes. As a study of these young elephants, they put them in uh, with these female elephants, mm -hmm. huh? put them in these young, these young elephants, uh -huh. huh? immature boy elephants, <clears throat> put them in there with some female elephants, they wanted them to mate and make, make more elephants, boy elephants wouldn't touch them, oh. <laughs> They would rather play with each other. They did. They, they, they rather play with each other. They over there playing. All these women. I mean, all these elves. They had to put them, the boy elephants, to sleep. They went and got some new boy elephants, but this time they put an old bull in there with them. Uh, and guess what? The bull wouldn't leave the women alone. Uh, and guess what? Huh? They got the, the young guys, they started hanging out with the bull. Uh, uh, notice that when the bull smelled a certain way, the women start coming around. Uh, uh, guess what? They start smelling like the bull elephant. They start walking like the bull. So long, it was baby elephants everywhere. And all I'm trying to tell you, you want to get the best results for your family? You want to get the best results for your classroom? You treat boys like boys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> huh. Praise the Lord. God's man. Because of his fears. His, his family. I want to close with his future. God's man has future. 
Look what the Bible says. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. That's the future. God's man has a future. God, sisters and brothers, doesn't wake up in the morning. Number one, because he didn't go to sleep. <laughs> but he doesn't see a new day dawning and beginning to scratch his head about what he's going to do. Huh? That might be what we do, but that ain't the way God operates. God, God's man, uh, God wants you to know that he's been thinking about you. Uh, those of us who call us ourselves God, man, man, God wants you to know that you've been on his mind. Uh, and somebody wondering, Pastor, you just told me a moment ago that this definition of blessing have changed over time. And here, her psalm again talking about wealth and riches shall be in his house. Well, sisters and brothers, I discovered that wisdom teaches you what real wealth is. Yeah, yeah. I've discovered, sisters and brothers, that other than my relationship uh, with Jesus Christ and, uh, well, I'm going to say Yolanda Nolan, but they right there together, my, my health in my wealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't do nothing uh, in my body don't cooperate. Yeah. And so I discovered, sisters and brothers, that when I get up in the morning and I look in the mirror yeah. and I know who it is that's looking back at me, yeah. Yeah. I discovered that God have already been good to me. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Uh-huh. The Bible tells me that I have a future. Yeah. Because God loves me uh, and he calls me blessed. Uh, I am God's man now. Uh, and because I am God's man now, uh, I am a blessed man now. Uh, I'm a blessed man because I fear the Lord. Uh, I fear the Lord. Uh, uh -huh. I live in life of God uh, each and every day. Uh, it bothers me. Uh, if God don't hear my prayers, uh, it bothers me. Uh, if God won't receive my worship, uh, it bothers me. Uh, if God won't receive my praise, uh, uh -huh, I fear the Lord. Uh, I watch how I treat my brother uh, because I fear the Lord. Uh, not only do I fear the Lord, uh, not only have I given my fears to him, uh,
calm. Calm and bless. Uh-huh. Alright, alright. Listen, I don't have everything I want. But you know what I do have? I have everything I need. Have you, are you, are you aware of what God is doing in your life? Where he's taking you to? Do you have, or have you noticed this? That it's the, it's the little stuff that make all the difference in the world. Now, I thank God, listen, just for the little, I was, I fried some chicken the other day. Yeah. And I was sitting there. And you know how you be sitting there about ready to eat. The big guy you can't eat because it, it ain't right yet. I looked around. Well, that one with two big reds. <laughs> got, my, got my bread and laid out. And, and my deal was I didn't want to start and then have to stop. So I'm trying to figure out what's missing. You know what was missing? I didn't have my pickles and my peppers. <laughs> then, huh? And, and I, then, 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 you know what's y'all messing with me now? Did Lana pick up them pickles? Did she pick up them pickles like I asked her to? <laughs> she, ain't, she ain't here, so I can, yeah, listen. <laughs> so got on up, got on up, went on to the refrigerator. I'm showing my faith. I didn't look first, I went on and got what I was gonna put it in. But I knew it was there. Faith. Man, got that pickles, you got them pickles, and got them pickles, and I just, I, then I just looked up, thank you, Lord. Huh? Because it's this little stuff that I'm grateful for. Huh? The house note is paid, the, the, the car, the car stuff, all the insurance, all that pay. Did that. If I, if, what's the date? The 20th. If I'm worried about that on the 20th, <laughs> it's, more, it's more thing wrong than being without pickles and pebbles. <laughs> see, 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 see how God done fixed my life that, the, that on the 20th of the month, the only thing on my mind. Is whether or not we got some pickles. I'm really, I'm really preaching. You missing it? To me, that's a blessed man. I don't know what you call blessed, but that's a blessed man. I'm just trying to tell you, it ain't the big stuff. It's the little stuff that God is blessing you to do. Don't you miss it. I'm trying to tell you. You are blessed. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm telling you. I'm going to move it on, but I'm telling you. I'm getting it. I, I, just, I just thank God. You know, the other day, it costs about $80. I don't care what the gas is. It costs about $80 to fill my truck up. Huh. And the other day, I'm at the gas pump, and I'm sitting at the pump of gas, and long about forty dollars. You know what? I just got tired of standing there, <laughs> huh? and I cut it off and put it up. It wasn't because I didn't have the eighty dollars. I just got tired. Huh? Ain't that blessed? When the only thing on your mind is, uh, do you got enough energy to put gas in your car? Uh, it ain't the money for the gas, it's do you feel like. You see how God has blessed me? It feel up flipping. I used to worry about the money part of the gas. I ain't got to worry about that right now. Hear what I said right now? I don't know what the Bible is going uh, but know this, I'm trusting in him. May not be able to put the $25 in it next week. But guess what? 
It's going to get me wherever I need to go. Huh? And how many of you can testify? You knew that gas should have ran out seven miles ago. Huh? But God just let you keep on going, keep on, keep on cranking it up. It ain't supposed to break this time. It ain't supposed to break this time. It ain't supposed to break this time. But God, I'm just trying to tell you, you are blessed. Maybe one that's out of the ark of Satan. I won't say total praise this morning. Praise the Lord for God's man. Huh? The God's man is saved. He knows him in the pardon of his sin. Huh? There may be one that is out of the ark of safety. God says, Come and give your life to me. Man or woman, God will save you. Huh? He will save you. All you have to do is confess your sins. Huh? And declare to him that he's God of the universe. Huh? Thou shalt be saved. If thou shalt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus and shalt believe within thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Salvation is yours for the asking. You only need to come. Maybe you are saved, but you're unchurched. Paradise is the place to be. Pastor, to lead your people to love you when we engage in the business of growing God's kingdom.